So I was able to help my client VD go from 10K a month to over 180K a month in just three months of working directly with me. However, you heard it from exactly how he did it, but let me give you my perspective of how exactly all the changes that we made that allowed VD to go from 10K a month to 180K a month. So let's jump right into the Notion doc. I'll leave this link down in the description if you wanna read it and also follow along. So first of, all, first of all, thank you for showing interest in learning the next steps of this business model called high ticket e-commerce. I'm going to be showing you guys a case study of exactly how I was able to help VD that was struggling at 10K a month with his own high ticket dropshipping store and how we turned around to over 180K. So an 18X multiplier in just three months of you know working directly with us. So first of all, I would highly recommend you check out the original case study right here or kind of like a testimonial video but this video is gonna be the case study of exactly how he was able to do that. So first of all, I just wanna give you a little bit of background about Vidi. So he had one broad store. So this is one common mistake that a lot of people make with high ticket e-commerce is they start a broad store, they sell massage shares, saunas, fireplaces, um, solar panels. They sell all types of products and the main downside of this, this model of uh, having a broad store is just it's very common. It's a very common mistake. You're struggling with one thing. It's going to be finding suppliers that actually sell on a broad store and two, being able to scale that. So Vidi had one broad store. He sold a ton of products, but he was able to find a few products that sold decently well on his store. Well, 10K a month for high tech isn't anything crazy, but he found a few products that sold you know, decently well in his large chunk of supplier databases. So he was struggling with consistency because he was not able to get past 10k a month because of the fact that whenever he tried to scale um, with a broad store it's very hard because of the fact that you're just all over the place you're trying to scale this brand this brand this product type your back ends all over the place your offers not dialed in so having a niche store which is exactly what we're going to talk about a little bit is a solution to his broad store mistake so basically v was in another program and he was told to spam test suppliers which is you know for sure a viable strategy for broad stores that's kind of what you have to do is you have to be spam testing suppliers to see which one sells and then take that you know hopefully that product or that brand that sells well and try to scale it up but the main problem with this is the fact that when you try to scale a a product on a broad store a lot of things break it's very unprofitable because your your offer, your website, and your sales process, your sales process is not dialed in to that one product type. But basically, once you find a good supplier, it's unscalable because you have to cater everything towards just one supplier, which will cause everything else to convert horribly. So the problem is that inconsistent sales, he has to be constantly testing new suppliers, and he was never getting traction, and essentially moving the business and growing the business in a rut and basically unaware of the next steps. So this is how exactly we were able to change that. So listen closely. So VD was able to go from 10K to 180K simply by doubling down on a new store that was niched down on one or two product types from his broad store. He eventually closed down the broad store because it did not make sense to run two stores at the same time if the niche store was taking off. So he eventually closed the broad store after his main focus was scaling after the main focus was scaling, you know, the the niche store. So the store that he built was very niche down and he moved his best selling products slash suppliers from his broad store to his niche store. And with his niche store, he made the domain super niche with a product type in it. He made the back end, the email marketing, super tailored towards the audience that are gonna be buying this type of product. And it also made the ads a lot more easier because when someone goes onto his website, and his website is um, theproducttype.com, people are, that are looking to buy that product type instantly feel more trust because of the fact that that store is tailored towards one single product type. So he basically moved his best selling product types from his broad store over. So this is the learning lessons that we learn from VD's um, case study. Is that if you have a broad store, which is more and more common because I've been, been seeing a lot of people that I've been talking to on like Instagram or Twitter that have been saying like, hey, I have a high ticket dropshipping store. I'm spending money, but I'm not getting sales. And I always see that they have a broad store like a homeparadise.com type domain and they're selling saunas, home theaters, solar panels, greenhouses, just all over the place, which is not the strategy to do. 
And if you're stuck with that, the best thing that you can really do is to spam test suppliers, find suppliers that work decently well on your broad store, and take that product type and make a niche store around it and make the niche store, for example, if you're gonna sell greenhouses, the greenhouse store.com or something like that, where you're the greenhouse expert and you're gonna convert, when someone's looking for a greenhouse, you're gonna be the go-to store and you're gonna convert way more visitors and compare it to the broad store. So if you're a broad store, the strategy is quickly find some good, some product types and or suppliers and then start a store around that product that's sub niche and having all your attention focused on just making one product sell is just a lot more attainable because you don't your focus you only have so much focus in a single day and you have so much bandwidth in a single day you may as well put that into something that you know that if you crack you will be profitable and do really really well for yourself but the main thing is to find that one product type first from that broad store if you have that so don't spread your focus too thin what I recommend if you're not, if you don't have a high ticket dropshipping store, is just have a niche store to start out with. And instead of having a broad store, having a niche store. Um, so there's, I guess, four types of niche. You could have a broad store like Amazon.com. You can have a furniture store or like a broad home store like Wayfair. And then you can have a furniture store that sells all types of furniture. And then you can have a office furniture store. And you can have a store that's just selling office chairs. There's basically five levels of niche and you ideally want to be the office store and don't be the furniture store don't be the office chair store it's too broad and too niche you want to be the perfect amount of niche which is the office supply office furniture store.com so focus either by pivoting the whole store or creating a brand new store around the best seller spend on ads so you can consistently see which SKUs, which brands sell best and put more budget towards those and scale back any underperforming SKUs and optimize those. When you are starting with a niche store, start with shopping ads and then you want to have conversions from your shopping ads. Do not even focus on search text at all until your shopping ads and your store is cracking at least $50,000 a month in revenue. So with shopping ads alone, you can get there just fine with shopping ads take those conversion converting keywords and put them into search text campaigns and target those keywords um, and send them to the exact landing page that they should be. So search text ads, I have a tutorial on how to set that up and how the whole strategy goes about search text ads, but they're super great for hyper specific search terms. For example, brand name plus product type plus SKU only probably like less than 100 or even a couple hundred people are searching that per month depending on the supplier of course so there's only a limited amount of people but when someone searches that they are very very high buying intent and with search text ads they're higher cpc than shopping but you can directly target a keyword without having to do any keyword sculpting inside your shopping funnel so search text ads they're super hyper specific and after you have more and more market share then you want to go up the funnel meaning that eventually if you have a store just selling like office let's just say office chairs and you got all the supplies for those office chairs and you're bidding on the low and you're bidding on the medium and you're just capped out well the only way to really go up the to scale is really just go up the funnel meaning that you want to get more market share you want to reinvest part of your budget into the high campaign and into the high campaign shopping so the high camping shopping is going to be a little bit harder of a campaign to crack, but it's going to take it longer to crack, but it is more profitable um, long term for your business. Meaning that if you crack a high campaign in the shopping, um, people that are going to click on those search terms or click on those ads, they're going to be put on your remarketing list. And then it's indirectly going to feed your medium and low campaigns in your remarketing campaigns, and they're going to make them more profitable. So essentially to scale, you have to be spending on generic keywords. Um, so you can be building a moat and you won't be able, you won't have to compete with other people that are just trying to outbid you on medium and low campaigns. So that's it. That's how you really win with high tech e-commerce in a nutshell. Again, if you want to work with myself and my team to help you if you're struggling with high ticket dropshipping or if you're a brand new beginner to high ticket dropshipping and you want to go from zero to 10K amount profit with a full refund back guarantee then there's a link down below to apply for coaching and there's also some free training that you guys can take to learn more about high ticket dropshipping that's it for now if you have any questions leave in the comment section below and i'll see you guys in the next one